The X-Wing is probably the most recognized ship of the Star Wars universe, by fans and non-fans alike. LEGO has done more than 30 different versions over the years, with the 7191 X-Wing fighter actually being one of the first Ultimate Collector series sets ever done. In 2010, LEGO did the second UCS set of the ship, the Red 5 X-Wing Star Fighter, and 10 years later, here is the third iteration of the ship at this scale. The new UCS X-Wing Star Fighter. Third time's the charm, right? Let's find out. First, let's start at the box. Not that there's something amazing about it, just the fact that the delivery service got it to me like this. I don't really care about the boxes, honestly, but pieces were loose inside and bags ripped open, so I was just scared that some pieces might have gone missing, and that could prove to be a problem in this particular case, as there are a bunch of new elements in this set that I could not possibly replace to make this review. Fortunately, there were no pieces missing, and the damaged ones were these, may the force be with them, that were easy to replace with my collection. The building instructions feature the usual facts about the ship and comments from the LEGO designers, but something that stood out to me was the fact that they claimed the Starfighter to be 12.5 meters long, but the UCS plaque of this set states the ship to be 13.4 meters long, so which one is it, guys? Now here's the cool thing, for the first time ever the info plaque on an Ultimate Collector series set is printed and not a sticker like every other set before this. Maybe they took inspiration from the big prints on the Hogwarts Express or the Icon set from Harry Potter and I'm sure a lot of fans will be happy about this change. The injection point right in the middle of the piece is the only downside though, kinda ugly to look at and LEGO actually photoshopped it out in one of the pictures of the press release kit materials, which was kinda unfortunate and gives some fans the perfect excuse to talk down on LEGO, understandably so. Next to it the exclusive Luke Skywalker minifigure, everything you would expect from a minifigure on a set with this price point I think, dual molded legs, prints on both arms, highly detailed torso print back and front and I quite like how the life support box is kinda crooked. The helmet is also quite detailed with a bunch of prints and the head has dual expression, both of them featuring a chin strap and the yellow visor. The placement of the minifigure next to the plaque is rather awkward though since it gets in the way of the text a little. There's also an R2D2 minifigure, this time around not exclusive to this set but still quite rare as it only showed up before in the trash compactor diorama set. The great thing about this figure is the fact that it has back printing, something R2 never had up until this point in time. The placement in the model is also rather awkward, behind the cockpit. Now, it is the place where the R2 units usually stay, my issue is that it isn't the right scale. This brick built R2D2 is properly scaled to the X-Wing and therefore would have made a lot more sense to have it here, even if it were just the dome piece rather than the minifigure, something LEGO has actually done before with the UCS Obi-Wan's Jedi Starfighter. Now let's look at the X-Wing itself, that slides into the stand like so. For fun, I decided to place it sideways just to try it out and it also works. I do feel this orientation would have been more in line with the orientation of previous UCS sets. Comparing these two images of the previous iterations of the model that I haven't built, this looks like a major upgrade. It is the first time that the Star Wars team got the tapered design on the front body section right. From above you'll notice this light angle that goes from behind the cockpit all the way to the nose section, and from the sides we can see the angled panel sections here. The way it was built was rather clever and it's all quite loose until you attach the nose section that locks everything in place. The fact that the sections are angled mean there's a lot of gaps that are kinda hard not to miss in my opinion and do hurt the final look a bit, especially up here where you can actually see through into the interior structure of the build. On the sides you still notice it, maybe not as much, though the design team took advantage of this flaw, let's call it that way, to place the torpedo launchers. The nose is another detail that somewhat bothers me. It's meant to be a solid continuous piece in the actual ship, most times done in grey in other LEGO X-Wings, but this time around was made white, that doesn't help it much I think. 
And these triangular tiles that are meant to be a part of the nose don't feel like they're part of the same object or piece of fuselage. I do think that if these had been made in grey, the model would have benefited a lot from it. The cockpit element is also printed, but as we lift it we find two of the four stickers the set has. I think given how far they went with printing both the cockpit element and the info plaque, just a little bit of an effort could have been made to give this set the non-sticker treatment it deserved. A cool detail inside is the retractable targeting sight. Another standout feature about this X-Wing model is that LEGO made an all new 3x3 curved wall element, which the set has 16 of, making it so that the front of the thrust engines are finally scaled properly. Inside the sneaky technique of jamming tiles between studs is cool but not illegal if you're wondering. This is what the engines look like from the back. The S-foil wings have brick built dark red stripes and I quite like the tips of the laser cannons where a white flipper element was included. Now as you're probably wondering you can lock the S-foils into attack position by cranking this technique element up here for a better way to display the star fighter. Now they're not exactly locked as there's wiggle room, it's just relying on gravity to keep it like this. If you keep turning the crank you can reset the wings into closed position for normal flight, though they're still not locked and I'm pretty sure I built this correctly. With that being said I do miss the snappiness that the LEGO X-Wing playsets I've built before had, but I guess that at this scale it would be too hard to accomplish given the weight of these assemblies perhaps. The wings also hide two new elements, the first being these new 8x3 wedge plates, so that now the X-Wing X-Foils finally have the correct angle at the back, and an 8x4 inverted tile element that helps tone down the anti-studs of the foils ever so slightly. It is in two of these new elements where the final stickers were placed. Let's talk prices now, the set will cost $240 and has little under 2000 pieces. The average pricing on UCS sets for the past 5 years is 12 cents a piece. The X-Wing is slightly above at 12.3 cents a piece, which would make this set on the expensive side of things. Now what's driving the average price up isn't just some random markup or company greed like most people will be inclined to think. There are a ton of new elements that this set has a lot of, 16 new curved walls, 16 new wedge plates, 9 inverted 4x8 tiles and the huge printed elements like the cockpit and info plaque. All of these drives production costs up tremendously even if you don't believe it. But at the end of the day I'm personally not that impressed with this model. It is the best and most accurate UCS X-Wing model done to date, though the justified pricing doesn't make it worth it in my opinion. It's kinda funny though that alongside R2-D2 and Luke's Land Speeder, the X-Wing will still be one of the cheapest UCS Star Wars LEGO sets money can buy at the moment. $200 would have been a great sweet spot for this, making it fly off the shelves for sure. Maybe one day in a galaxy far, far away. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video you have. This is the way. Oh man, the reference game in this video is off the charts.